Hello and welcome back to 340 Paddler. Today I want to talk about PFDs, personal flotation devices, not to be mistaken for PDFs, which are some kind of computer thing. I don't know, I'm a paddler. And there are five different classifications of PFD. Most of them are fairly irrelevant to us. Most of us will be using a Type 3, uh, Coast Guard Type 3. So let's talk about the types we're going to be dealing with. We have the inflatable type. These will either inflate when you hit the water or there's going to be some kind of pull toggle that you pull and it inflates. You will have to put over your own neck though in the case of belt type uh, inflatables. Then there's the standard vest PFD. So let's start talking about these. Uh, first we have the inflatable. And the inflatable comes in two different forms. We have the belt type. Now this is going to be very common amongst a lot of paddlers, especially during the day if it's particularly hot. Uh, a lot of stand-up paddle boarders will use this. And the trick to it is when it inflates, you will have to put it around your neck, which is tricky if you're unconscious or something's happened. Then we have the vest type where it's going to inflate uh, just like the belt type, but it's already around your neck. It's already in position. So a little bit easier. Now the inflatables, the concern amongst many paddlers I've talked to is what happens if I'm unconscious, if I've hit my head on a rock or something, uh, will I be able to, you know, I won't be able to pull the toggle or maybe I won't be able to put around my neck. And the way around that is to frequently use this during the day and then use a standard vest at night during the 340, but it's your call. Also keep in mind, it's a real problem if these things happen to go off at a boat ramp or a checkpoint because you catch the toggle on something. It has happened, I believe, at Weldon Springs as, as well as other places. Then we have the standard PFD. And the standard has certain advantages. Now, of course, it's going to be warmer when it's particularly hot because you're wearing basically another layer, but you have pockets. Uh, and you can keep a great many things in your pockets. So definitely an advantage there. Now, many people, especially a lot of the surf ski paddlers, will wear something called a Moki. Uh, this is a standard PFD. The advantage to it is you can keep a camelback or other drinking water bladder in the back, uh, which makes life a lot easier. You're not putting something on the deck. You also have a massive pocket in the front. Now the tricky thing is this goes over your head as opposed to side entry. If you have bad shoulders or you just would rather a side entry, you get the same basic idea with a Vacobi. Uh, same concept, but here it's going to be a front entry. Now, there are some other concerns that we need to talk about. Uh, color, etc. Now, if you are in the water and they're looking for you and you're separated from your boat, color becomes important. You don't really want a black PFD if they're looking for you in the Missouri River at night. So, you're going to want something fairly colorful. Everyone has different philosophies on this. Some people think it's cooler to wear black or whatever. My personal advice would be wear the brightest color that you can, something that's going to contrast well with either blue water or, in our case, brown water. The other thing to keep in mind is you want a PFD that's going to have a reflective element to it. So if they shine across the river, hopefully they catch uh, sight of that reflective tape on the PFD. So if this all works out, if everything goes well, hopefully you just paddle with it and you have fun and it's one less thing that you have to worry about. And I recommend practicing in your PFD, even if you're very familiar with the water and it's very shallow and you would never ever need it, practice in it. I practice in my PFD all the time. I never go on the water without it. If nothing else, just to get used to it, to the heat that you're going to feel, to the feeling of the PFD, whatever it is. So until next time, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, quarrels, qualms, quandaries, or curse words, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, this is 340 Paddler, hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.
This video brought to you by the South Dakota Kayak Challenge. The South Dakota Kayak Challenge, come on up to beautiful South Dakota. Such a beautiful and wonderful state that you didn't even realize that that's not South Dakota, that's North Dakota. So come on down to South Dakota, land of 10,000 lakes and a football team, which would also be wrong because that's Minnesota. In fact, South Dakota is such a boring state that they don't even have a football team or all that many lakes. Come to the South Dakota Kayak Challenge where we make our escape to Nebraska. South Dakota Kayak Challenge registration starts January 1st.